Okay, complications. Uh, in my experience with over 1,300 procedures, uh, nodules or bumps occur infrequently. In my hands, they occur about one in a hundred times. Why do they happen? They happen if I inadvertently inject the silicone too close to the surface of the skin or if I put in too much product. So what happens if this happens? Uh, silicone bumps are extremely treatable. The vast majority of them will disappear with a dilute triamcinolone acetonide injection, triamcinolone acetonide, is an injectable steroid. Uh, silicone bumps, they pop up every now and again in about one in a hundred patients. They tend to not be disfiguring and I'm gonna show, <coughs> I'm gonna show a picture of what they look like. Um, next item of business is localized redness lasting several months. I've seen this in about three or four patients and I'm gonna show an example uh, where there's not a huge area but a small area of localized redness that in my view is likely due to me putting a little too much silicone into a very small area and it elicits a little bit of uh, an immune response. The skin gets a little red. I've been tr I treat it with some triamcinolone acetonide injections, um, sometimes some topical hydrocortisone, and our IPL, our intense pulse light machine, has been very helpful in getting the red out. Uh, and overcorrection, I have to mention overcorrection because a, a lot of the negative press about liquid injectable silicone involves disfigured patients that have had that have been to a pumping party uh, or have had medical non-medical grade silicone injected or they've had their face injected by a non-physician and it's irremovable and overcorrection is possible and overcorrection happens if the injector puts in too much or if too many procedures are performed and that needs to be avoided at all costs. So temporary bruising can happen in anybody. Uh, this is uh, one of my patients that came back to see me for a two-week check. So obviously she had a shiner. Two weeks after her lower eyelid procedure, she had a little bit of remnant purple. But the good news is that all bru bruising eventually fades. And you can see her eyelid bags aren't gone, but they're softer looking. They're better looking than they were beforehand. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for improvement of eyelid grooves, not elimination. Uh, this is the best picture I could show of silicone bumps. This is a result of me injecting too superficially. If you look at the nasal labial fold closely, there's a nodular beaded appearance, bump, 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 uh, that occurred after a treatment. After about three triamcinolone injections, uh, the area completely smoothed out. This doesn't happen in everybody. There are some patients that I make bumps on that they don't go away. If they don't go away and it's problematic, I would, in, I would inject a little bit of Novocaine into the area and take a little blade, shave it off, it makes a little scab and it disappears. Fortunately, silicone bumps have not been a major problem in my practice and when they occur, I've had very good success at minimizing or eliminating them. Uh, this is to demonstrate what I was mentioning earlier about uh, triggering an outbreak of herpes labialis or cold sores of the lips after a needle injection procedure. This is the before picture. Uh, this is three days after a procedure. You can see she developed a cold sore. And not only did she develop a cold sore, but there was a little nodule or a palpable bump. You could feel a bump in her lip right over here associated with the cold sore. I started her on some Valtrex. I injected some triamcinolone. She ended up developing a little bit of an indentation over there, which I subsequently filled in with a little bit more silicone. And her final result is perfect. Uh, this is prolonged redness lasting several months. This patient had basolabial folds injected, and she was really bothered by the, by the marionette grooves and the indentations in the corner of the mouth. And out of the few patients I've seen this on, this tends to be the area that it happens in. And I, I'm less aggressive in this area now because I've realized that if you put too much volume into a little area like this, it can cause a little bit of a reaction in the skin where the skin gets a little bit red. This completely dissipated over six months after some intralesional injecting it with some triamcinolone acetonide, triamcinolone acetonide, some topical 2% hydrocortisone, and some intense pulse light treatments, it ultimately eventually faded. Uh, just a couple of special applications that I've, uh, that I've had the privilege of using silicone with. Craniotomy indentation. Uh, I wish more neurosurgeons knew about this. A craniotomy is when you uh, have a hole made in your skull, typically for a, a, an intracranial hemorrhage, like a stroke. And this is one of my very favorite patients who came to me and was actually going to get some hair transplants to this area to camouflage it. 
And on two occasions, I filled it in with some silicone. It's markedly improved. It's permanently filled, and it never has to get done again. Uh, so similar situation with a forehead indentation. Uh, permanent improvement. And I want to leave this slide up for, uh, for a couple of minutes. Hand rejuvenation is, um, for me, it's easy, and it's very high patient satisfaction. As we age, a lot of patients say, you know, th they keep their face out of the sun, but their hands give their age away. As we age, we lose volume in the hands, and you tend to get more visibility of the tendons of the hands. You get more visibility of the veins. And this is due to a loss of fat volume in the hands. And by increasing volume in the hands, this is before and after one treatment with liquid injectable silicone, you could see a markedly improved youthful appearance to the hands. I've been doing a lot of hands lately. It's kind of fun. Before I move on to the concluding parts of the talk, I just want to give you my final thoughts on liquid injectable silicone. In my practice, silicone is, uh, provides safe, natural-looking, permanent facial rejuvenation. The serial puncture micro droplet technique must be strictly adhered to. And it's very important to expect to have several treatments because the enemy of the enemy of good is trying to achieve perfection because that could lead to overcorrection, bumps, and problems. Um, the versatility of liquid injectable silicone allows multiple things to be addressed. Crooked noses to get straightened, lips to be enlarged, nasolabial folds to be minimized, lower eyelid bags to be improved, and that leads to very high satisfaction for my patients and me. Mm -hmm.